if there was a man more happy outside of East Lansing, Michigan, than Anthony Delacalci last Saturday night, I want to meet him. Anthony went on a limb, picked Michigan State to beat Wisconsin in a big upset. It came true. But the shocking thing about it all, you show up and set today without the mullet. What's going on? I got a little bit of a haircut, but don't worry, nothing's changed. I'm still here giving you good advice and giving you correct picks. Last week wasn't great. It was three and four. You and the evil one won four and three. But I get extra credit because I correctly picked Michigan State to beat Wisconsin, the only one who had the guts to do it. I had no idea what happened in the fashion it happened. Nonetheless, I was quite right with that one. A little controversial, but Anthony, I'll give you all the credit in the world. You did pick it. You picked it correctly. But there's only one thing we anybody cares about in this show. I'm in first place. You and the evil one, last place. Last place is one game behind first place, so next week when that changes, we can all talk to Brad and ask him how it feels to be in last place. We'll see about that, but you know one thing. The number one, that's all about me. I'm number one. Whether it's a game over him, or a game in the standings, or a game in life, this is Brad Carroll's Game Day. <laughs> be at the world's largest outdoor cocktail party, but number 22 Georgia and Florida will be. More importantly for the Gators, John Brantley is expected to start at quarterback. That's big news for Florida. Florida could use all the help they could get on offense. They've lost three straight games. They're only averaging nine points on offense over that span. They've played some decent defense in that in that stretch, but Meanwhile, Aaron Murray has Georgia rolling at, at quarterback. Georgia's won five games in a row. They're really building some momentum. Florida, on the other hand, is going in the wrong direction. They're going to have to try and turn it around. Absolutely. Two teams going in opposite directions. But like I said, Brantley is huge here. We all know what the Florida quarterbacks did in those previous three games. Not good at all. you got to think Brantley does well in this game. Georgia, you know how I feel about them. But who gets the W? Brantley helps Florida a little bit, but not enough to overcome Aaron Murray, the SEC leader in touchdown passes. Georgia wins 24-17. to Yeah, Florida's the underdog in this game. They're plus three. And I got them winning in an upset. 27-24. Number five, Clemson goes into Georgia Tech. Huge ACC matchup. This series, 14 of the last 16 matchups, decided by an average of 4.6 points. Every reason to believe it's going to be close again. You would think so, but Georgia Tech's really struggled lately. The option attack, which was getting it done in the early part of the season, not the last two games, which Georgia Tech has lost. Meanwhile, Clemson continues to pile up points. Everyone's been talking about freshman wide receiver Sammy Watkins, but DeAndre Hopkins had a huge game for Clemson last week. Taj Boyd is finding both of those receivers with regularity. I just don't see anyone slowing down Clemson's offense right now. Yeah, you got to love Clemson's offense. High-powered. They throw the ball over the field. Fun to watch. Georgia Tech last week. I told you they weren't going to beat Miami. Once the schedule got tougher for Georgia Tech, they started a little bit of a tailspin. Clemson on a roll could be BCS National Championship hopes. Yeah, they have huge hopes, and they're going to continue them here. Their defense makes me leery, but I don't think their offense is going to be able to be slowed down enough. They'll win this one 40-28. Yeah, Clemson's minus four in this game. They're going to win it 35-27. Number six, Stanford, goes into Southern Cal in a game that's going to feature national championship hopes. That's right, for Southern Cal, because this is their championship game right here. They're going to want to beat Stanford in the worst way. They're coming off a big win over Notre Dame. They're going to want to keep that going. Andrew Luck, however, is on the other sideline. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to slow down Andrew Luck. No one's been able to do it so far. USC can't play in the postseason, but they do have a chance to derail Stanford's national championship hopes. Stanford kind of has the cachet that USC had a few years ago when Pete Carroll had that program running. I was really impressed with USC last week in their win over Notre Dame. Unfortunately, I think it's more of a reflection of the Irish, again, not being as good as we thought they were. But... Southern Cal does have a good team. Unfortunately, I was even more impressed with Stanford last week, the way they rolled up Washington. And luck, I trust. That's the way I think we're <laughs> going to go here. I was surprised as you were. Stanford rolled over Washington. I thought Washington would keep it close. Stanford just bullied them with the running game, believe it or not. Stanford, an interesting fact, 10 games in a row, they won by 25 or more points. That's the most in 75 years. But who wins? You know, no one's been able to get close to them. I think you'll see a game in which USC keeps it close for half. And Stanford takes over 43-28. Yeah, Stanford's minus 7.5 in this game. And I think USC keeps it close. 
Stanford, 31-27. Manhattan in New York City is the mecca of the universe, but Manhattan, Kansas on Saturday is going to be the mecca of college football. Number 9 Oklahoma goes against number 8 Kansas State. This one's going to be an absolutely huge battle. Oklahoma lost for the first time last week. Kansas State can't seem to lose. What gives? Yeah, who thought at the beginning of the season Kansas State would be the undefeated team with a shot? Not me. You're a real threat of testing your mullet for HGH. And you go back to your losing ways, huh, Anthony? Seems a little odd, doesn't it? I'm sure Kelly Kapowski is crushed by this revelation. Brad, great job this week, but I didn't expect any different seeing any copy be pick for pick. I see how it is for both of you guys. When the going gets tough, you guys cheat. On to my picks. Oklahoma State, minus 14. Georgia, minus 3. Penn State, minus 5. Clemson, minus 4. Stanford, minus 7.5. Nebraska, minus 4. And on to my game of the week. Number 9 Oklahoma faces unbeaten number 8 Kansas State in Manhattan, Kansas. Oklahoma will come out mad in this game after suffering its first loss last weekend. But we'll look to take all that frustration out on the Wildcats. Kansas State will look to keep its momentum going in what is its biggest game in years. If this was a night game, I might pick Kansas State. But unfortunately for the Wildcats, it's not to be. The Sooners will be out for blood. Oklahoma wins 38-21. I don't know what he's talking about, me copying his picks. Wouldn't that mean he would be in first place in the season race? Yeah, you would think so. I also don't understand what both of you are so obsessed with my hair. First you gave all my credit for picking right games to my hair. Now I get it cut. I didn't get my head shaved, people. I still have hair on top of it. And all of a sudden I'm back to Loser Island. I'm back to all these kinds of things. I don't, I don't understand it. You might be like Michael Bolton. When he cut his hair, he never sold another record in his life. I never tried to sell a record, but I guess if my record career was going to happen, it would have happened by now. You are trying to sell a little bit of a record. You got your record out there. That's true. I got my picks record. But one thing that he said that I do agree with, it's going to be tough because Oklahoma lost last week. They're going to be mad. They're not going to want to lose two games in a row. That makes it tougher for Kansas State than it would have been if Oklahoma had beaten Texas Tech. You know, honestly, we talked a little bit about, about it before the show, and I think the evil one would agree. If Oklahoma didn't lose last week, I think we all pick Kansas State to win this game. I think so. I think we were going that way. You know, their quarterback... Colin Klein has just seems to be a winner. He just gets the job done for Kansas State. He doesn't have these flashy numbers. No one's talking about him in the Heisman race. But Kansas State just seems to keep winning games. They're good on offense. They're pretty good on defense. They are at home in this game. I'm sure their crowd is going to be absolutely psyched to welcome in Oklahoma, even though Oklahoma lost the game last week. So we'll see what happens in this game. I do agree with the evil one. If this was a night game, that's a whole other new atmosphere might give them an extra field goal, an extra touchdown here, based on that momentum. Not going to happen, but who wins the game? I got to go with Oklahoma. You know, they scare me because of the way they played last week, and they scare me because Mike Stoops has lost a lot of big games, even though he has a national championship to his credit. But I got to go with Oklahoma. It's going to be close, but 37-30, the Sooners win. Yeah, Oklahoma's minus 13 and a half in this game. I got them covering 28-14. From one Big 12 showdown to another, Baylor goes into number three Oklahoma State. Justin Blackman expected to play in this game. Oklahoma State, great offense. Baylor, I thought had a great offense until they played Texas A&M a couple of weeks ago. Totally destroyed in that game. Ruined any kind of confidence I had in Baylor going forward. What about you? I agree with you in part on Baylor, but I still think they have a great offense. I think their problem is they don't play defense. And speaking of teams that don't play defense, Oklahoma State does not play defense at all. But they have such a fabulous offense that no one's been able to stop them and it hasn't you know, caused them to lose a game yet. I'm not sure that's the way it's going to shake out throughout the rest of the season. But as I mentioned before, Baylor's defense isn't very good either. So I don't think they're going to be able to stop Oklahoma State on offense. Yeah, probably a lot of points in this one. Oklahoma State, believe it or not, controls their own destiny to play for a BCS National Championship. You take out the winner of a loser, that is, against LSU Alabama next week, Oklahoma State, if they win out, they're playing for a title. That's one of the things that I want to see. Oklahoma State knows that now because of what happened with Oklahoma. They're in control of their own destiny, as you said. How do they handle that pressure? We have seen so many teams throughout the history of the BCS play opponents they should beat, whether it's the last week of the season or a week like right now, and they blow a game because they can't handle the pressure. They come out tight. Got to watch for that in this game. But I like Oklahoma State piling up more points, 48-30. Yeah, Oklahoma State minus 14 in this game. They're going to win it, 45-24.
You may recall I put Michigan State in the penthouse last week. And after what they did to Wisconsin, there's no way I can take them out. They stay in the penthouse. Who's joining them? Stanford and Andrew Luck. They just keep rolling opponents. Did it to Washington last week. Welcome to the penthouse. Enjoy your stay with Michigan State. There's only one team I can put in the doghouse this week. That's Oklahoma. You know, I haven't been on the Oklahoma bandwagon since the beginning of the season. I actually said they stunk. They weren't in the top seven of all teams in the nation, even though they were getting hyped as the number one team in the nation. Guess what? They lost to Texas Tech at home. That's inexcusable. You're in the doghouse. Switching over to the Big Ten, history can be made as Illinois goes into number 19 Penn State. Joe Paterno just one win away from becoming the all-time wins leader in Division I college football. He's going to do it with a squad that's on a roll and against an Illinois team that's struggling badly. Absolutely. You know, this is going to be a great win for Joe Paterno if he can get it. You mentioned Illinois. They had this high-powered offense that was rolling and all of a sudden the last two games where to it go? It's gone. Meanwhile, Penn State's kind of finding some offense. Matt McGloin saw most of the time at quarterback last week. He did a nice job. They've been kind of playing two quarterbacks. Paterno still won't say that it's one or the other. Rob Bolden's been the other guy getting some starts, but Penn State's had great defense all year long, and if their offense can keep making strides, they might make some noise in the Big, in the big Ten race this season. I like them in this game. Yeah, what they also found on offense is a running game. That's huge for any Big Ten school, especially for Penn State, because you talked about the murky quarterback situation. But who wins this game? Like I said, Joe Paterno gets that 409th career win. Good for Joe Paterno. 20-10, to 10, Nittany Lions. Yeah, Penn State minus 5. 27-17, they win it. We talked about Michigan State at the top of the show. They have an absolutely huge battle in the Big Ten. They're going to number 14, Nebraska. Michigan State, suddenly Anthony Delacalci's new favorite team. But I got a question for those Spartans. How in the world did they lose to Notre Dame? That's my best answer I can give you. I don't know, because Notre Dame's not nearly as good as we thought they were. Again, same old Notre Dame. But that's kind of the beauty of college football. You look back. You look at a team like Michigan State, what if they win the rest of their games? A team like Oklahoma, what if they win the rest of their games? We're going to look back at their losses and go, how'd they lose to Notre Dame? We look back and go, how did Oklahoma lose to Texas Tech? That's why we love the sport, because every year those type of games happen and they affect the national championship picture. Yeah, Michigan State's had a heck of a month. They beat Ohio State, they beat Michigan, they beat Wisconsin, and now they can beat Nebraska. Are you kidding me? All in one month? This would be an absolutely amazing thing for any team to do but especially Michigan State, which, yes, has some football tradition, but not the tradition of those schools that they've beaten. This would be quite the win for them to pull off. I like what they've been doing. We all know the story. What they've been doing on defense has been sensational. I really like Kirk Cousins, at quarterback, a guy who kind of flies under the radar. He's really having a nice season. He can make a play for you. He doesn't throw that many interceptions. Look for him to have another strong game. And what the key to this game is Michigan State needs to do what they did to Denard Robinson, to Taylor Martinez. A running quarterback, they got to make him into a pocket passer because he's thrown seven touchdowns, but he's also thrown six interceptions. If they can do that, Michigan State can continue its momentum. And remember, Nebraska got blown out by Wisconsin. Yes. If you want to go by recent history, that sways it a little bit to the Spartan side. But what do you got winning? You said Michigan State's my new favorite team, and they kind of are. They have something about them that suggests they're going to continue to build on this momentum. I like them again, 24-20. What a shock. Anthony jumps on a bandwagon. He did it with the mullet in the NHL. Now he's doing it with Michigan State. But guess what? Nebraska's going to win this game. They're minus four. They're going to win it, 31-24. For all of us here at Brad Carroll's Game Day, for Anthony Delacalci, for the evil one, for Joe Fortunato behind the camera, I'm Brad Carroll. We'll see you next week.